All right, everyone, continuing with the notes for chapter five, and we're going to be starting off this video with section five of your notes talking about public television. Most public TV stations are affiliated with PBS, the Public Broadcasting Service. That's the service that was created from the creation of the Corporation for Public Broadcasting that we talked about earlier in the semester. Generally, programs are produced by one or more large PBS stations. You're going to find that a lot of programs aren't produced by PBS in and of itself, that they're going to originate from somewhere within the non-commercial television system. A lot of programs come out of Boston from the affiliate there, WGBH. You'll also see lots of programming from uh, WTTW in Chicago, KQED in San Francisco, uh, and even uh, Pittsburgh, WQED, the home of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, uh, and several other stations throughout the country contribute to producing shows that are made widely available to public television stations. And some long-running series are actually co-productions with an international broadcasting entity like the BBC. British shows tend to be popular on a lot of public broadcasting stations. The audience for public TV reflects the overall U.S. population demographically, and PBS viewers tend to be important opinion leaders in their communities. Uh, so PBS tries to reach out to audiences that may not necessarily be served by most of your mainstream commercial broadcast stations. Uh, you'll see a wide variety of program on programming content, I should say, on PBS stations and public television stations. And they're trying to serve audiences that may not have programming that is specially tailored for them because uh, that programming may not receive high ratings that would make a commercial station look closely enough at it to put it on the air. Viewers pledge nearly $500 million each year to local public TV stations. This equates to about 55% of all revenues for the stations. Uh, the other ways that uh, public television uh, gets revenue is by corporate underwriting sponsorships. Again, that's the non-commercial version of an advertisement. Uh, and if they are PBS stations, they may receive funding from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. In other words, your tax dollars at work. Now, let's go to cable television. Cable programming can be seen uh, in terms of the different types of services that are offered, including basic cable. Basic cable are channels that are available for the lowest subscription charge talking about things like local and regional broadcast signals. Uh, and this is made possible because of the must-carry rule. The must-carry rule handed down from the government, from the FCC, mandates that local broadcast TV stations must be carried by local cable operators. So when you subscribe to a cable service, you are guaranteed to pick up the ABC, the CBS, the Fox, the NBC affiliates that are in your local area. Also, you have advertiser-supported cable services. Uh, so this is going to be your channels that tend to come with most basic cable packages, your TBS, your USA, uh, Discovery Channel, ESPN, uh, National Geographic, MTV, all of those channels that include advertising content uh, that your local cable operator provides is part of that basic cable service. Retransmission consent is where broadcast TV stations can negotiate some form of compensation from cable systems in return for their signals being carried on TV. So Spectrum actually pays WRAL and WTVD and WNCN for the rights to be able to uh, carry the content of their programming on their cable outlet. Advertiser-supported basic cable services carry national advertising, 
with opportunities for local cable systems to place their own advertising spots. Generally, local cable operators will have about one to two minutes per hour that they could insert local commercials within the various networks. Uh, so if you ever see a commercial for your local bakery uh, on the USA Network or on Fox News or on whatever else you're watching, uh, that is time that was sold by the local cable operator and not by uh, USA Network or F Fox News or Comedy Central or whoever. Some networks reach niche audiences by providing specialized fare. So we do tend to think of cable channels meeting a certain need, attracting a certain audience, whether it's comedy shows or stand-up comedy, focusing on music or on reality television or on documentaries or on movies. But how narrow the particular demographic is that a particular cable station reaches out to can get as wide berth or as narrow focused as it would like to. Digital services are provided to enhance basic cable services and may be charged at an additional fee over top of what you receive in terms of your basic cable programming. And then there's also pay services in terms of different channels that are available. Subscribers can pay an additional fee to receive these types of services like original programming that's not available on other outlets, things like commercial free movies, that's where your channels like HBO and Showtime come into play. Also regional sports networks uh, becoming more and more popular as premium services uh, and people will pay to have a, a special regional sports channel to be able to watch some of their favorite teams. Specialty services include public service channels like C-SPAN, also regional news channels locally that would be Spectrum News, also things like program guides uh, where you can either pull up a specific channel to see what is on all the other channels at once or that there's a computerized sort of thing that you use your remote with your set top box. Uh, government channels are available, music channels are available, local weather, and the number of different features and enhancements uh, can go on and on and on depending on what your cable company provides and whether you want to pay for certain services or if they're included within certain bundles. Packaging cable services. So there's generally we talk about this in terms of tiers. Uh, that you get kind of a group of services for a set price. Profitability in the cable business is often based on the number of homes that upgrade to higher levels of service. One of the ways that cable tends to focus on making its money is not so much reaching out to new subscribers, although they love that, uh, but trying to upgrade the subscribers they currently have to take on more services so that they can generate revenue from uh, getting subscribers to bump up uh, what they receive and therefore how much they pay per month. Tiering is the creation of different service levels in cable so that you have uh, various different levels of different packages. Some other numbers for you to consider. Homes past the HP number, this is the number of households that are in an area that could potentially be served by cable TV. In other words, if you live in an area where cable television is readily available, that you could call up the comp cable company and say, hey, I want to subscribe to cable, mm -hmm. and they say, yeah, we can do that. We'll come out and we'll hook you up. You are considered part of the homes past number. Basic penetration is the percentage of homes past that actually do subscribe to cable. So let's say in a certain area that uh, 100,000 people would be able to subscribe to cable television, that the cable runs past their house, they could call up, they could have it installed tomorrow if they wanted to. But out of those 100,000 people, the homes past number, only 
80,000 of them actually subscribe. So the basic penetration would be 80%, the 80,000 out of 100,000. Then on top of that, you have pay households, the percentage of cable subscribers that use additional pay services over top of the basic cable package. Multi-pay households pay for more than one pay service. So you might subscribe to a premium channel package and you might have DVR service and you might have all sorts of other features and things that cable television provides. So if you have more than one of those services over and, ab uh, over and above basic cable, you would be considered a multi-pay household. Pay-per-view or PPV, these are households that choose what they pay in terms of programming on a very selective basis. So it is, uh, you know, they pay X amount of dollars to watch the latest WrestleMania event or particular types of movies that you pay per instance to be able to watch. Addressable converters allow cable companies to ensure that only households that make use of a certain service are able to receive that service. And what does that mean? Uh, this would be uh, basically the idea that content that is available on cable uh, can reach any and every household. Uh, say, for example, uh, let's take HBO. Your cable box at home, if you subscribe to cable, is capable of receiving HBO. But there's an addressability feature in your cable top box that makes it so that if you are not a subscriber to HBO, you are not going to get HBO content. If you do subscribe to HBO, then the cable company will address your set top box in order for you to have permission to view HBO. And multi-event pay-per-view, or what's known as impulse pay-per-view, provides a wider choice of movies and special, uh, special programs. Uh, these would be kind of different packages that you might be able to buy uh, for, for a cluster of different movies or a cluster of special events. Cable and MSO ownership. Uh, for this, we're just going to talk about what an MSO is. MSO stands for Multi-System Operators. These are cable operators that provide service in several jurisdictions. That tends to be the majority of cable operators these days. Uh, you don't have a lot of mom and pop owners of local cable uh, providers anymore. They tend to be taken up by the larger companies like Spectrum and Comcast and Time Warner and all of those guys. Cable economics. While there will be an increase in revenue from advertising, the rise of pay-per-view and DVRs, uh, many cable executives think that the largest share of additional revenue will come from broadband internet and from telephone services. So you notice that there's a real push whenever you see an advertisement from a cable company that they want you to bundle. They don't want you to just get cable TV. They want you to also pick up uh, the high-speed internet. They want you to pick up their phone services. Spectrum now also offering wireless phone services, uh, cell phones. So there's uh, really a push for uh, those that provide cable uh, to Try to give you as many different services as you possibly can so that you can give them as much money as you possibly can. Now, cable is losing some television subscribers to satellite TV and others to internet and mobile downloads. This is happening more and more over the past 10 years. The cut the cord culture, as it were. Uh, in the case of satellite, satellite tends to be able to offer programming at a cheaper rate uh, and can compete with cable that way even though satellite doesn't really have the ability to provide phone and internet services like cable can uh, and you're also seeing a lot more 
programming being made available through new media. And you have companies like Fubo and Sling and YouTube now providing live streaming of cable channels that you can purchase from them uh, many times at rates lower than cable as well. Speaking of satellite, uh, the formal term of this is DBS, Direct Broadcast Satellite. Satellite packages resemble cable tiers in the way program selection is accomplished, and satellite service provides local television channels to about 90% of all television households. So satellite services don't have the same must-carry rule that local cable operators have. Uh, you do see satellite offering local channels in a lot more markets these days, but not everywhere. Some of the smaller television markets may be stuck with uh, getting television programming from a larger market that may be not too far away or sometimes they may even get uh, the feed from New York or Los Angeles uh, in order to get their ABC and CBS programming and that sort of thing. DBS tends to be priced less than cable for comparable services. We've talked about that already. DBS providers are worried that bundled broadband and voice over internet protocol services, VOIP, will entice many consumers to stay with cable. Um, this is sort of a thorn in the side of satellite providers because it's hard for them to be able to provide additional services on top of the uh, programming aspect. Many times when you do get a bundle with DirecTV or Dish Network, uh, you are getting your internet from some other source, perhaps a DSL connection, and your phone service might come from the local phone company, but uh, it's all kind of packaged together that you're paying one price for these services that are actually from different companies. DBS was a leader in providing things like digital content, DVR services, live video streams. Uh, they were kind of the pioneers of making that available to the public. And then once cable saw the potential for success in these things, they later on adopted some of these same services. Now, DBS does have its setbacks. Uh, DirecTV and Dish Network have both been known for having rather poor customer service. Uh, there's also weather-related transmission problems. You know, your picture gets pixelated whenever it's storming outside or, you know, if you get too much snow on the dish, that can cause a problem as well. Uh, but satellite also does offer the potential for programming service for people that don't have cable as an option, especially in more rural and remote areas. Telco fiber optic services, picture quality can be very high because fiber systems can provide a large bandwidth. Uh, a lot of times uh, these services are known in the urban areas as Fios or as Uverse where they're using a high quality phone or cable line to be able to provide content. Telco companies have made a point of providing excellent customer service in order to entice people to take their service as opposed to sticking with cable or satellite services. All right, so this is a good place to stop. We will finish things up in the next video, so make sure you join me over there. Look for Chapter 5, Part C.